You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live Portraits, featuring intimate, in depth interviews with Black Hollywood stars and influencers. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black and now, the host for Black Hollywood Live Portraits. Little Kanye West for you. Little Kanye, yeah. <laughs> Little Shot Town Love. Right. There you go. <laughs> hey. Welcome to another exciting edition of Black Hollywood Live Portraits. I'm your host, Nick Perdue. Joined along with my fabulous, beautiful, fantastic co host, Boom, me, Megan Thomas. How are you? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We have the one legendary and only. actor, yes. singer, voiceover artist, Mr. T.C. Carson. How you doing? Sir? I'm well. I'm well. How about yourself? I'm good. Good. Yeah, it's Friday. Right. Yeah, man. We have to cut that music because I have to do something. <laughs> everyone, everyone knows you as the awesome Kyle on Living Single, so I had to do this. We are living. <laughs> 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 hey, single. Oh, and in a 90s kind of world. Work it out, work it out, work it you out. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is like the most infamous intro. Everyone it knows is. that. And the lady dancing. Uh huh. Sorry, I had to do that. We're in your presence today. Well, I'm glad you did. Thank you. <laughs> you how, feel how, good about that? I do. Good, good. Do you feel good about it? You can lie to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> you can lie. It's all right. You can say anything to me, baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. How many people will walk up to you and just start singing the, the theme song to the show? Oh, dude. Right. It happens all the time. Right? Isn't it? It happens all the time. And they'll tap you on the shoulder and wink and start singing. And say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you get tired of it, don't you? Well, you know, you look at it as people really enjoyed the show. Right. And they really had a good time. So I take it all as love. What's the funniest thing somebody's ever done to you in regards to the show? Wow. <laughs> Oh, I can't tell you that. Um, Roll the internet. You can, you can no, say it. No, you can no, say no, it. no, no, no. I can tell you that one. Um, I remember when the show first came out and I was back home in Chicago and I hadn't really gotten accustomed to people knowing who I was or anything. So I'm standing in line at the cleaners and I'm waiting to get my stuff, you know, and this woman comes up behind me and she smacks me on the back of the shoulder. She's, I turn around, I was like, and she said, I don't like the way you talk to Max. I was like, <laughs> that's a baby. That's a show. <laughs> right. They pay me to do that. You shouldn't hit people that you don't know. <laughs> and she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I said, it's okay. It's okay. But, I mean, I turned around. I was you know, I'm from Chicago. <laughs> right, I mean, right. That. But, yeah, that's about the funniest thing. That's yeah. That's probably what something I d would do. No, you wouldn't. You would never. Do okay, that. I don't know. You that. would never. But I would that. be like, excuse me, we got leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would do that to you. Okay, that'd be all right. <laughs> so, okay. Well, first of all, do you do you like to be called TC or you like to be called Terrence? TC. TC. Yes. Okay. So growing up in Chicago, TC, mm -hmm. what was that like? Oh, brother, I grew up in the projects, um, and it was. It wasn't the high-rise projects. It was what they what we call the low-rise, which mm. is only two stories high, and they were almost like townhouses. Actually, we had upstairs and downstairs, and um, it was nice. I had my relatives right there. Where there were two of my mother's sisters that lived out there, and so I grew up with my cousins, and um, it was nice. My mother kept a really nice house. She would walk in and think you walked into something out of House and Garden. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. She hung wallpaper. She sewed curtains. She did everything. Yeah. Yeah. What, what side is Chicago? Uh, southwest side, out mm -hmm. by Cicero. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it didn't feel like the projects when you were living there? Well, at times. At uh. times. You know, we had gunshots and stuff like that, but it wasn't, it wasn't the um, typical what you would see when people talk about the projects in Chicago, the high-rise uh. Cabrini Greens. It wasn't right. like that. Not at all. Mm. Okay. So how has Chicago shaped you as a man? Wow, that's a good question, brother. How does Chicago shape me? Um, I think it provided me a lot of opportunity. Mm. I think um, because of being there, I had the opportunity to sing with um, bands. I had the opportunity to dance. I had the opportunity to do theater. And I think all of that kind of shaped the artist that I am today. Okay. 
But now with with all the the violence and a lot of the turmoil going on in in Chicago right now, like how does that kind of affect you now, or, or what are your thoughts on all that? Well, I look at that. I look at violence everywhere. We have violence here. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the way we've raised this last couple of generations. When you have generations of people that were raised by children. You know, you had children mm -hmm. having babies at 16. They didn't know anything. They didn't really teach their kids anything. Right. And then those kids had kids when they were young. And so now you have two generations of kids that didn't get what I got as a kid, the, um, the drive to be educated, the drive to be better. Mm. You know, they got a survival gene. Mm. And that's kind of what we're dealing with right now, right. at least in my eyes. Right. Yeah. I have a question about that. You... So you grew up in Chicago. How did your mom shield you from some of the more negative sides of growing up in the projects? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Miss Annie, um, and she did it for all of us, all of the, um, her nieces and nephews that were out there. She'd take us to the park. She took us to movies. Um, in the summertime, my mother would uh, vacation. We would vacation in Chicago, and she'd take me to the theater. She took me to opera. She'd take me to the museums. You know, we would do architectural tours, and she made sure that I saw something outside of that little microcosm. Did that did that make you go, feel different from maybe the other men that were growing up around you because they might have had more of a pull to go towards a negative lifestyle? I don't think they had more of a pull. I think we all kind of had the same opportunity because we all were growing up together. But I think um, because I'm an only child, I had more time with her. Mm. And so she was able to spend more time um, showing me things, okay. you know. And um, I was always a little strange. <laughs> Growing up, I was different, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I just kind of dealt with that. You know, I was not like any of my other cousins. My, my, um, yeah, I wasn't like none of them. <laughs> what did they say <laughs> about you? Oh, uh, they, they used to talk about me bad. Oh, they used to call me names and trick me and just all kind of stuff. But it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Because look at you now, honey. Come on, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I get along with them fine. You That's know good. what? Yeah, kids do what kids do, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. But everybody's cool. I love my family. Right. That's good. And so, because so your, your family's always been supportive and encouraging your uh, pursuing a career in entertainment. So, when did you know that you wanted to perform professionally and really, you know? Probably like seventh grade. Okay. Um, talent show and the reaction from the audience. What did you perform in the, in the talent show? Or were, were, were you in it or were you just watching no, talent show? I was show? in it. I was okay. in it. Um, we did I Want to Go Outside in the Rain by the Dramatics. Okay. And there was another one that I did. I can't think of the other one I did. But that was the one. That was the one. And I did the high part. Mm. What did it sound like? Oh, not right now. <laughs> you see, you know, you see, I try to put you on the spot, huh? <laughs> now, I might be able to give you a little low something, but I ain't going to give you nothing up there right now. Mm -mm. <laughs> so that was good, though. That was I'm not saying I had to good. try. I had to ask. So you attended the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Right. And you majored in architecture and creative design. Wh where did that come from? And why that route? Um, I always liked buildings. I always liked um, interior design. I think I, it, I got it from my mom, okay. you know, and I told her when I was young, I was going to be an architect. So I went to school for that. Although I did everything else but that. Right. <laughs> but I went to school for architecture and interior design. Yeah. So then how did you transition from, you know, saying I'm going to be an architect to, you know what, I'm going to do acting full time? Um, I got the bug when I was in college. Um, I had access Okay. to all these different teachers and um, I really realized that I had something that I really enjoyed doing. I liked drawing. I liked, you know, architecture, but I loved being on stage and that's the thing that turned it around for me. Awesome. So then from then on, that point on when you were acting on stage, you decided, you know what, I'm just going to push this architecture stuff to the side. Is that, is that how it went? That's how it went pretty much. And since I was paying for school, I figured I could do what I mm -hmm. felt like doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So she wasn't happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't really say too much, you know, because I was paying for it. So. Right. Yeah. So then you pledged IOTA Phi Theta fraternity. Yes. Correct. Well, then, now, what made you choose IOTA? Because there's, uh, there's, what, four or five different fraternities. Mm -hmm. What made you go with IOTA? 
the IOTAs on our campus, um, first of all, it was a new fraternity okay. on the campus. And they were doing things. They were doing things in the community. They were doing um, tutoring sessions. They had test files. They were helping students. You know, right. and they were outreaching the community. They were doing more than just giving parties. And, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to be with a fraternity, an organization that was doing more than just partying. Right. So are you like one of those old school IOTAs now? Like, do you still rock your colors and go hang out at, at Every shows? once in a while. Every <laughs> once in a while, I'll go, I'll go and hang out for a minute. But I'm, I'm more of a in the background. Oh, you're the cool one. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So you, you, you got your start by, by performing in many plays like The Wiz and Dream Girls and Ain't Misbehaving. Which play or musical has been your favorite to be a part of? Oh, wow. That's, you are asking really good This is your job, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, that's hard, brother, because all the ones you mentioned, um, wow. Are you asking, huh, are you asking about the show or my role in the show? Which one I like doing the most, or which show I like the most? Well, or just your your role in in the show, like in your personal experience with Once on This Island. Once on this Once island. Once on this island, I got to do um, Papa Gay, and he was uh, very conniving, and mm. the um, the lyric and the vocal sit, re sit real well in my voice. And I was young, and I could do things. Yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Well, everyone knows you, of course, as Kyle Barker from the hit sitcom, one of my favorites, Living Single. Go ahead. You can say it again. We are living. <laughs> hey, hey. Single. Okay. But you know, I used to do the dance, the, the lady in the background. I really I really would record that. I mean, I'm, I'm from Kentucky, so we didn't have much to do. So I would literally record that intro and try to like mimic the girls, you know, doing her little dance behind the little sheet. Can you still do it? That's about okay. all I can do. Oh, okay. And then she had the arm thing. <laughs> I still can't get it. I'm going to get it one of these days. So you did that for five years and you eventually earned two NAACP Image Award nominations. What was that experience like to be on such an amazing show? It was really one of the highlights of my career. I got a chance to work with people that I respected and that were really friends. The friendship you saw on screen was real. We had a good time. We laughed a lot on, on set. Uh, so much stuff that you never would see. Right. The public never got a chance to see. But John Hinton and um, Kim Coles were his hysterical oh my god just going on riffs they would just go and it would we'd sit and, and crack up for hours hours right. um working with queen she's she's funny too she's really really funny and naturally funny that's right. what that was mm -hmm. the one thing about working with her um, i know she hadn't done uh, much film work on um, television work you know and but she was so natural at it you know it was really nice working with her and of course the legendary kim fields yes you know too mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tootie. You know, we, we were not allowed to say Tootie. Really? Uh, she didn't like Tootie. Aww. And I would call her Tootie when I felt like it. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like it, though. Uh, but she's a sweetie pie. She's a sweetie. And um, Erica Alexander, who is one of my dear, dear friends. We're born on the same day, actually. Yay. And um, she was really, really a, um, a wonderful person to be able to bounce off of. Right. Because she was so funny, and she was always right in the moment. You know? Right. Cool. How much are you like Kyle Barker in real life? Depends on who you ask. Okay, let's ask your friends. <laughs> <laughs> what do your friends say? Um, hey, probably, it, it, again, it depends on which friends you ask. Uh, I would say they would say probably 50%. I would say um, more like 20. Really? Yeah, because he was a... Um, combination of a few people in my life my father a couple of lawyer friends i knew and a doctor friend that i knew right and so i kind of put them all together to create that persona you did that so well by the way thank you i used to hate you at times yeah, a lot of <laughs> a lot of women did right. <laughs> bougie kyle there go kyle again but you did so well with that role thank i will you. I have to commend you for that so can you tell us what that audition process was like to do this oh wow that was um we had sent in a tape, actually. Really? And, uh, yeah. And they said no. 
And so I went on about my business and doing what I was doing. And then I got a call and said, well, they want you to come to L.A. to um, screen test. I was like, well, okay, fine. They flew me out. Came out, I think, on a Tuesday. We did it on Tuesday. They checked it on Wednesday, and I went to work on Thursday. Wow. That's amazing. And then that's it. That was it, yeah. Did you have to call back anybody and say, hey, sorry, I can't work for you anymore. I'm going to be famous. (laughs) (laughs) It was all music and stuff like that, and they were all hoping that I would get it. That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. It really, really was cool. I called my mother first. Yes. What did she she say? She was like, no. I was like, yeah. She's like, no. I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, my God. (laughs) She just started laughing and crying at the same time. That's a blessing. Yeah. That's exciting. Like it is. Like, especially, like, what was the first day of shooting like? Kind of scary, man, because I had never been on a television set before. Right. Um, and uh, it's Queen Latifah. It's Erica Alexander. It's Tootie. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right, it's, right. You know, and I'm here with these people. And so it was a little... It was a little stressful. That first um, few weeks were a little stressful for me. Mm. But after that, it kinda, we kind of all gelled together, and uh, we were a family. You know, and that kind of made everything else okay. So what, what was the, the, the atmosphere like? Because you say you know, that you know, uh, uh, John and, and Kim would, would just go at it for, for you know, <laughs> time. So like, the, the stuff that we, we didn't see, it's like the behind-the-scenes stuff or like mm-hmm. in-between takes or whatever. Like, what was the story that you can tell us? You know, something that happened, you're oh. like, oh, my gosh. Wow, let me come back. I have to think about that. Mm. We're going to start that because yeah. I would like to know. Yeah, I, have to think, <laughs> I have to think about that. Something behind the scenes. Something behind the scenes. Let me ask you this. Did it, okay. did it ever feel surreal to you that you were, like, driving on to a lot every day to Absolutely. go play on TV? Absolutely. The first time I was, I saw it on TV, I saw myself on TV. I went, like, wow. <laughs> 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 okay you working okay cool then uh, but as a as an actor you know you you are always looking for the next gig you're right. always trying to get the next gig so even on living single i was trying to do other things um didn't have much help from my agency but i was trying to do other huh. things you know um because you you know that eventually the job ends and you have to look for something else right right so I think you you earlier said that is you and uh, and, and Erica have the same birthday. Yes. And so was there a special chemistry that that you guys shared that you didn't share with any of, of your other co-stars, or was it? Oh yeah, Erica is. Um, it's like we were twins, mm. and that's my other person. You know, she hears me when I don't talk. Ah. <laughs> you know. Wow. Um, yeah, she's she's a the sister that I've never had, mm. you know, and it was like that from the moment that I met her, and um, it wasn't like that with anybody else. I'm I'm close to her. I'm close to Kim Coles and John. Everybody else, I'm we're good friends, mm. but those three, I'm close to. Is there any chance of a reunion? Y'all need to qu- quit asking me that. <laughs> People have been tweeting that. If you want it to happen, talk to your girl. Oh yes. Maybe, I mean, on Talk the Queen Latifah show or something, you know, Talk you guys all do a yeah. surprise or Talk something. Talk to your girl. <laughs> yeah. Yes, let's do it. Because let, me, I, let, I me, it. let me call her real quick. Call yes. her. And then we'll, call her. We'll, we'll call yeah. set it up. Because you got it like that, honey. <laughs> you got it like that. You do. So, um, Living Single was such a unique show during its time. Did you know the kind of impact that you guys would have as you were shooting this stuff? Not in the beginning. Um, but as I talk to people about the show and as I talk to fans and family members and friends and especially young people I understood the importance of what we were doing Mm -hmm. you know even um it was it was funny but it was a continuation like we had the Cosby show and then it was continued on to different worlds Mm -hmm. and then after different worlds it was like living single so you had these these college people that had grew grown up and gone on to their professional lives and right. we got a chance to see that as well, right. you know. And uh, you hadn't seen a man like Kyle on TV. You hadn't seen a brother that was working on Wall Street that still had his locks, that was still connected to his Africanness. Right. Right. And I knew that that was very important. We needed to see that image. Right. Now, as far as your hair went, your hair was already like that when you started, as far as the length. And yes. was it ever a question in your mind, like, they might tell me to cut my locks? Oh, they used to talk about it all the time. What, what was your reaction to it? And it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> Mm-mm. Well, they won't have to write you off before they made you cut your locks. 
It, I mean, my whole fight was this is important. Mm -hmm. It's not just hair. Mm -hmm. And you have to look at it as something else. You can't, and you, if you cut it off, then you cut off part of who he is and part of who people expect him to be. Right. And you can't do that. You've already built him to be this, so you can't do it. They did an episode about him having his hair cut, you right. know, at work and stuff. And um, that was a hard episode to do now that I think about it. <laughs> really? I, yeah, I didn't like getting into that clown jester costume <laughs> thing. I didn't like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, that's behind the scenes. I didn't there like you that. go. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah, but I did it. Well, yeah, it was, it kind of was too close to home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm, anyway. Well, well, do you think that Living Single set the mold for some of the black shows that we have today? Like? Like um, anything that's on air that's pretty big. Um, well, not right now, but... Some of the shows, like Half and Half, one of my half favorites. Half and Half was a good one. That was a right. good show. That's an Yvette Lee Bowser show. It is. The same woman who did um, Living Single. Do you, do you think there's a void in today's TV when it comes to the type of sitcoms that we had back in the 90s for African-American families? Yeah, I think there is. I think there's a void in that kind of TV, period. Um, when you look at TV right now, it's very apocalyptic. It's very um, sexual. It's very um, crime-driven. You don't see a whole lot of the other thing, especially right. not when you deal with people of color. Right. Mm -hmm. um, George Lopez has a show out now. It's pretty funny. I watched it last night. Um, but we need more, more diversity. And I look at us to do that. I right. look at you know African Americans to have what you want to have on TV. Why are we waiting for somebody else to do that? You know, look at Latinos. They have 20, 30, 40 channels. Right. Asian Americans have 20, 30, 40 channels. We got what, four? Five. Yeah, take. Yeah, 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 four or five. You know, yeah. so something's wrong with that, mm. and we have to fix that. We have to correct that imbalance. What are some of the things we can do to fix that? Ah, that's a good question too. I guess if we, you know, talking to people, um, telling people what we want, um, people that we know that have money, like Magic Johnson, he has a great network now. Yeah, you know, so. And supporting the people that are doing it, supporting right. TV One, supporting, you know, BET and Centric and the other stations, you know, making sh and telling them what we want to see, the type of programs that we want to see. Do you think that there are any shows out right now that you would go, that's definitely in the line of living single or are there none that you can think of? I don't really watch much TV right now. Um, I watch um, The Voice. <laughs> Oh, I love that show. <laughs> no, I right, love it. Right. Uh, what else? And news and um, boondocks. <laughs> That's like the perfect mix right there. Right. That will get you through life. Boondocks, the news, and the voice. <laughs> I love it. So what were some of your favorite memories being on Living Single? All the people I got the chance to meet. You know, I got a chance to meet um, Gladys Knight and um, CCH Pounder and Lou Ferrigno and oh my god the list goes on and on and on you know all these people came through um basketball stars football stars you know that mm. I would never had a chance to meet mm. was there anybody when you saw them you were like <gasps> Gladys really and Eartha Kitt okay and Eartha Kitt mommy was mommy was cool okay yeah she was something else you, she, you lost your words for a moment it's, I mean, that's a legend, right. you know, right. and she was so, she was such a lady. I mean, I told the girls, I said, you all need to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? She always sat a certain way. She uh, carried herself a certain right. way. She, she was beautiful all the time in sweatpants and a head wrap. You know, Man. she was beautiful. Um, oh, funny story. Okay. So the week she was on. Uh, afterwards, well, I, sometimes we would have a gathering, you know, so I had made gumbo at the house mm. and everybody came over to the house and we were sitting around eating and she was sitting on the couch having some gumbo and regaling us with one of her stories, right? And all of a sudden she picks up this thing and she starts to wipe her mouth, excuse me, sorry about that, man. She starts to wipe her mouth with it and the guy looks and he picks it up. And he says, Miss Kit, that's my tie. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at him and said, Darling, I thought it was a silk napkin. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. That's funny. That and her fingernails all over the house. 
Really? Yeah, the Lee press ons. Oh, yeah, they used to be big <laughs> back in the day. Like in the, in the ashtray, yes. you know, it's like, oh, you got tired of them, you couldn't eat that crab with those nails. <laughs> <laughs> so you better keep those. Off. Oh, they're in, a, in the picture frame. Do you? Yeah, with, oh. with me, her and I, myself. Her and myself, really, TC? Her and, <laughs> yeah, our picture. Yes. Yeah. Let me get that. <laughs> let, me, let me get that. <laughs> mm, I got it. I'll get you a copy though. That's legendary though. Yeah, it was. It really was yeah. great working with her. I had um, cause she's done everything. She's right. done film. She's done music. She's done Broadway. She's done television. Yeah, she's done it all. Man, did 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 she purr for you? Like did did she? Yes, she did. She did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> So now let, let me ask you, being on a, such a successful show like Living Single, mm -hmm. right? You know, we see actors that, you know, get this fame, you know, and being with that, you know, show security and then, you know, now everything that comes with it, the fandom and the stardom and this and that, and they tend to go a little wild and crazy. Mm -hmm. So what kept you grounded and what kept you from being, you know, some of these actors that we see on TMZ and such? Um, my friends and family. Um... Miss Annie wasn't having it, mm -hmm. you know, and Lord knows I didn't want to disappoint her or make her angry, mm -hmm. you know, so um, I knew that what I did reflected on her. And I knew that I, I wanted to do art. It wasn't really about wilding out. It was like, how do I parlay this? How do I do the other things that I want to do? How do I do my music? How do mm -hmm. I have my, uh, my own show one day, you know? So I was always working, trying to make those things happen. So I didn't have time for it. Now, trust me, I did my share of partying. <laughs> yeah, you know, but... As, not, as you should. Yeah, right? I mean, come yeah. on, come on. You know. a young actor, you know, good-looking yeah. black man out here in Hollywood. You know, you should, yeah, you gotta yeah, do what you gotta party do. Party a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go back and forth to Chicago a lot. Yeah, you party in Chicago, too. Go home. Right. Yeah, you go home and party. You go home and party. <laughs> so what is, what is your advice that you would give to some young, young actors that are, you know, tempted and taking the path that you took? Watch your money. Mm -hmm. Watch your money. Watch your money. Did you spend money on anything that you're looking back now? Like, I shouldn't a have. A bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. And um, stick to what you're trying to do. Don't let those, because those temptations will always be there. That's mm -hmm. going to be there. Mm -hmm. you know? But you have a window of time to do the thing that you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So stay in your window and make it happen. It's good advice. Good advice. And so in, uh, in 2005, you reprised your role of Living Single uh, alongside Erica Alexander on the sitcom Half and Half. Mm -hmm. So what was most nostalgic about that experience for you? <laughs> Working with Erica and just, <laughs> just her being Erica, <laughs> her being Maxine. Ma that, when she puts that person on, mm. it's a whole different thing. And it's, it kind of stays on until the, they go cut. Right. So right. when the show is over, then she's gone. But until then, you're dealing with Maxine. Right. Did you kind of like fall back into it like no time has passed? Uh, yeah. 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 You know, it's a rhythm. It's a rhythm that we had. So, mm. you know, it was real easy. And they wrote it. Yvette, you know, was real clear about how to write that. So they wrote it again. Oh, wow. You know. Right. I, just I am it. sorry about that. My phone is just buzzing. Because you're a popular man. They're they watching on, you live right yes, now. Yes, they know you're on BHL Portraits. That's, is that what it is? That's what it is. Oh, okay. So you've done a lot of voiceover work with this buttery voice that you have. <laughs> um, you you have been Kratos in the video game God of War, and you were also in the Star Wars video games. How is voiceover acting different from doing acting for television or in film? Oh, you don't have to be nearly as pretty. <laughs> Oh, no, there's no makeup, there's no wardrobe, there's no lighting, there's no powder, there's none <laughs> of that crap. Right. You go to work, you stand in front of a microphone, and you do your thing, and you go home. Do you, did you have a lot of fun doing the voiceover? I worked out a lot of stuff doing Kratos. Really? Kratos was a very angry person, and I got a, that was like therapy some days. Really? It was oh, like, I... they, oh, yeah, I got a chance. I can't say that, but I just <laughs> <laughs> got a chance to like really let some aggression out. So how does that work? Do they give you like a sheet that has a line that like say it 15 different ways? How does that work? It depends. Um, like some short lines, they'll take like three or four different ways to say them, okay. depending on the game, because it's gameplay. Right. But um, 
when we talk about the cinematics in the game, which are the, um, the movie elements of the game, we try to do that in um, blocks. So gotcha. it makes sense, like a paragraph, so it'll make sense. Right. You know, and sometimes we do um, two actors. If it's a, um, a scene, they'll do ah. us both. Okay. Well, so how did you get over, I mean, obviously you have the voice for it, but how did you make the transition to do voiceover work? It was something that I was doing when I was before Living Single. Mm. And so when I got here, um, I found an agency here and we did, I investigated a little bit more. I did jingle work in Chicago. Really? Uh-huh. So you sang the songs as well? Oh, yes. Let me hear. <laughs> Are you going to sing for me before yes, we leave? Yes, baby. I'm going to sing for you before we leave this, <laughs> this television show. Yes, I am. Yes, yes. <laughs> Is she always like this? I am. Every day. I didn't every ask day. you. I asked you. Every, every day. day. <laughs> and what's crazy is that like her text messages are just like, because you know how, how she talks. She's like, I know exactly how she's saying it. She's texting. It's, it's crazy. Funny. It's, it's crazy. Funny. So now let me ask you. So with, with on-camera auditions, right, you know, you have, you have cast and directors that are eyeing your every move, right? And so it's not only about your acting, but, you know, like you said, it's about your look and the mannerisms and, and this and that. So... Uh, how are voiceover auditions different than, you know, like your, the on-camera auditions? You don't have this to work with. You have no visual. Mm -hmm. So everything you do has to be portrayed with your voice. And there are a lot of colors that you can paint with that. Mm -hmm. But you have to be cognizant of how you're painting those colors. It's so rise and fall, and especially for commercial work, it is about rise and fall. When you listen to commercials, there's a cadence, there's a rise and fall, the way mm -hmm. they end sentences, the way they end the commercial, you know, um, and that's something you have to practice. Yeah. Well, okay. So let me ask you this, though. What are you going to ask me? <laughs> <laughs> which kind uh, is, is more stressful? You know, which audition process would you think is more, more stressful? Oh, the on camera. I do voiceover auditions at home on the couch. <laughs> oh, and then you just, you just yeah, MP3, boom, right. yeah, I do that at home, so that's real easy. But yeah. going in and having to interface with somebody and you know, <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> you, know what I'm you gotta go. Well, you know, an audition is like has three different parts. There's the part that when you walk in, that's the introduction. Right. So that's a whole separate thing. Right. Then there's the actual audition, which is a whole separate thing. Then there's the departure, which is a whole separate thing. Mm. And all of that takes, you got to be conscious of all of those things before you get up out of there. Right. I can do the other thing on my couch, in the closet. In your sweats. In my sweats. Fancy. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody knows. Right, no one knows. Nobody as long knows. as you have that yeah. golden voice. <laughs> Audition tips right there. There right. you go. Comfortable, being right. comfortable. Right. Yeah. So you, you've always been a singer. What inspired you to focus more on your singing and kind of shift over from acting? Because it's the thing that I can self-motivate. It's the thing that I can self-generate. Um, I have to wait for somebody to give me an audition to possibly hire me for a film. Mm -hmm. Same thing for voiceover. But music, I can go out and make happen. I can get a band. I can go and get club work. We can, you know, and that's what we're doing now. Who are some of your favorite artists? Wow, that's a lot. Um, back in the day, people like um, Nat King Cole, Billy Eckstein, Ooh. Johnny Mathis, um, Lou Rawls, Ella, Sarah, um, Nancy Wilson. That's what my that's what I grew up listening to, along right. with Jackson Five and Temptations and all the stuff that you know yeah. we were listening to back then. You know, Spinners and um, Earth, Wind and Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, Shy Lights. Shy Lights. Yeah, yeah, come on, come <laughs> on. You don't know nothing about that. I mean, I'm an old soul, <laughs> man. Yeah, right. yeah. and um, uh, now I listen. I love Lettucey. Um There's a brother, Raul Madone, uh, really, really good guitarist singer. Um, who else am I listening to right now? Shaka always. Oh, yes. Shaka yeah. always. She can do no wrong. Right. And she looks beautiful right now. Right. She is gorgeous. You seen her, man? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, and still, I mean, at, at the age she's at now, yeah. she's, she's still killing it. And she looks happy. Right. Like, when you look at her, she looks like she's happy. 
Yeah. Same thing when I look at Lettucey now. When I looked at Lettucey before, there was a sadness about right. her. Mm. And now when I look at her, I don't see that. Yeah. I see she's happy, and her music shows that she's and happy. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. So if you'd like to hear more of Mr. T.C. Carson, you can go to iTunes, Amazon, and Spotify. His new jazz album, Live in Beverly Hills, is available. It's awesome. Oh, thank you. You heard some of it. I did. Okay. So what was the inspiration behind this album? Really, it was to give people a taste, a taste of what it was like to come and see me live so I can get out and perform. Uh -huh. It really is a, a tool to help me have a tour to help me get out in front of people because I think that's where you get the best part of who I am. Um, I'm not really a recording artist. Uh, I feel I'm a theater person. Mm -hmm. And when you come and see me, you'll understand that. You get the whole performance on yeah, stage. Yeah, and, and some of those things you just don't get on a, on a record. Right. Or on, I should say a CD. I'm dating myself right. on a CD. Right. Do, you, do, you play, <laughs> do you play instruments as well? I play at the piano. You play at the piano? I play mean? at the piano. That means I would never let you hear me play it. But <laughs> well, that's what I I'm play it at home to do what I need to do. Right, <laughs> right, okay. Are you self-taught? <laughs> yes. Oh. I used to play in church. Ah, mm. what church? AME? Baptist? Baptist. Oh, honey, so you do know how to, you know how to play the organ? I used to. <laughs> that was used you? To. That was you? Not that good, but yeah. Okay. Well, praise the Lord. I can Lord, rock then. a little bit. A little bit? Hallelujah. People kick out the shoes and run? Uh, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right. So, speaking of the organ, uh, you know, you uh, pulled out all the stops on this newest single that you have, uh, Warm is the Rain. Ah. So tell us about this song because we, we we listen to it. Yes. It's great. Like it's, it's it's very something that I can listen to in the car on the way home. Like after I know I've had a successful date, mm -hmm. I'm putting this on. <laughs> <laughs> and what constitutes a successful date? If if she she's still <laughs> there when it's over, like that's the whole. <laughs> she didn't throw anything in your <laughs> face. Yeah, you know, like oh, if she still likes me. Easy, at the end huh? of the day. Okay. Right. Oh, okay, Standards cool. is low over here. Yeah, huh? Hollywood. You know, you gotta have those things. You gotta. <laughs> Tell us about this song. I love it. Warm is the rain. Um, the whole, the whole album, um, Truth, was created as a stage show. Mm. So warm is the rain is a moment in that that talks about three generations of black men. Uh, the first brother who uh, I see a man. He opens the door to the fifth floor. Only he would know all the things he went through. Project Lives Are Broken Home. So that's him, and he's looking out from his perch. He's made it. Mm -hmm. He's driving home, and he sees the boys on, because he still lives in the hood, mm -hmm. and he sees them playing ball, and he sees them on the street, and he sees them lounging around. He goes, the future of the promised land standing right before you. We need to help a man to stand. Mm -hmm. Warm as the rain, it hides my feelings, but strong as the pain, it's time to dry my eyes. We have to pick ourselves up as brothers in our community and do better. Right. Take care of each other. Take care of our sisters. Take care of our community. We have dropped the ball. Right. We have dropped the ball. And so that's what the song is about, you know. But there's, 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 it's my father, you know. It's my grandfather. Um, it's my uncles. That's what that song is about. Right. That's strong. Mm-hmm. You know? Warm as the rain. You can get it on iTunes. <laughs> Now, are there, are there any other songs on the album that you have a, a, a personal connection to or that were like, you know, a personal story behind? Um, well, well, this time uh, is about a love that kind of transitions between three different, li what, between lifetimes. So it's mm -hmm. the same love that keeps popping up. So you see them in Egypt. You see them in modern times. You see them in in Europe somewhere. This was the video that was supposed to go with this song. <laughs> so you see this couple and you see them meeting in all these different lifetimes, but the love is the same right. every time they meet. You're so deep. <laughs> I like, I'm over here. I can visualize this. Good. Did you, did you see that as you were writing the song? Yes. Mm -hmm. As I said, it was, it was done, the whole album was done as a, a visual piece. So it was supposed to have um, uh, lighting and uh, screens and all that stuff and hopefully you know i get some money it may happen mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. my vote is to have eric alexander and you do that <laughs> okay that's my vote i'll take that vote okay yeah because you know what's great because I, I i definitely see kyle's character in one of these one of these videos oh yeah. absolutely yeah. You know? yeah 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 
So now, how did you develop an interest in jazz over all the other genres of, of music when you were starting out? It was the place that had the most space. Mm -hmm. um, in R&B and, you know, other things, uh, there's a style. There's a certain sound you're supposed to have, a certain way you're supposed to do your runs. and your, But jazz was open. Mm -hmm. um, when I heard jazz singers, they were, it was so varied, you know. Uh, when I listened to Al Jarreau, he was able to do things that I hadn't see, heard singers do. Right. And he wasn't riffing and running. Right. When I heard Bobby McFerrin, he was able to do things that singers, I didn't hear singers do. He used his whole voice, not just a piece of it. Right. And I really liked that. And that was the place where you could do all of that. You, you know, you couldn't do that really in R&B. You had to either sing high or you sang down there or you screamed. Right. <laughs> there, there, over there, one of three. <laughs> I think that's what I like about your song. You have a mix of different, you know, you can definitely tell that you, you have such a gifted voice. Um, but you, you play around with different instruments with your voice. Like, you, you can do riffs. Obviously, you can do runs. You can sing very low. Can, I mean, you you do everything. So I, I really like that about your song. Well, I will thank say that. you, thank you. See, I'm up here selling songs for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. iTunes. iTunes. <laughs> Hit me up on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to get my viewership up. Okay. That's right. All right. Have you ever considered dabbling in other musical genres? Um, well, I've done opera. Mm. Um, I've done gospel, um, show tunes. So I've I've done. You know, done r and I used to sing with the Top 40s um, dance band back in Chicago. Um, funk band. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. a couple of jazz bands. I've been singing for a while. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite song? Of to perform. all time to, ah, that's good, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to perform. Oh, Bill Withers Use Me. Really? Ah. Yeah. Don't keep on you. Right. We got a real nice version of that. Okay, let's hear it. Just it's kidding. Sunny Just album, kidding. Album. Just See, it's kidding. on now. Just Sunny kidding. Album, See? Hey, you can get on iTunes. Exactly. <laughs> Spotify. Spotify. Mm -hmm. And so, Amazon. Right. So what separates you from some of the actors that have decided to trans transition over into singing? What separates you? Um, I would like to think that... Uh, the fact that I was a singer before I was an actor and not an actor, you know, that sings. I'm a singer that acts. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. You and I, 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 would, I would always put that first. I mean, I'm, I don't consider myself an actor. I think I can act. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I look at people like uh, Morgan Freeman, that's an actor. You know, Denzel, that's an actor. I can act, but I, I am a singer. I am a singer. Now, they may be able to sing, but I'm a singer. Mm. I like it. So what do you want people to take away when they hear your music? I want them to feel good. I want them to laugh a little bit. I want them to, to get a little taste of what it was like to be there. You know, uh, we have fun. We have fun. And I'd, music today is kind of, um, I'm looking for the joy. There's not a whole lot of joy in music today. There's a lot of pontificating. There's a lot of uh, bravado. There's a mm. lot of sex. There's a lot of sex. There's not a whole lot of love. There's not a whole lot of joy. There's not a whole lot of happiness and uplifting. Right. And that's what I want my music to do. I want people to put it on, like you said, make you feel good. Right. You know, you put it on and make you smile or make you take your day down a little bit, you know, mm. let you relax a little bit. That's what it's supposed to do. And I'm hoping it does that for people. And I hope it makes people want to come out and see me. There you go. See, that was such a political answer. That was, that was a great answer. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I mean, music has definitely changed over the years that we need to get back to that, to that good stuff. Even R&B. Of... Right. R&B has changed, Right, man. right. Yeah, so, that was... Yeah. So that's why, you know, you're help leading the charge to help change and cultivate, you right. know, good organic music. None I of this hope so. Nonsense that gets a lot of airplay. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're not going to start. We're right, not going right, to right, right, start. We'll it's a whole other show. Right, right. <laughs> right. So let me ask you, because, you know, we love seeing you on, on TV. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans to go back to, to TV and, and sitcoms and, you know, because we, we, we miss seeing TC on TV. Oh, man, I miss that check. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm I know just, that's right. But I would love to be back on TV. Um, it'd be nice to do something that was fun like that. That mm -hmm. was, you know, that could make a difference. Um, I look at. I'm, maybe you're not that young enough, young enough not to know, but uh, Norman Lear. Mm. Um, when back in the day, he had five or six different things on TV at the same time. Right. Cross-pollinated all those people, and they all had their own point of view. And they all were funny, but they all were topical. They dealt with issues. And that's what you ask me what's missing in television right now. That type of sitcom is missing, where it's, it's human and it's dealing with what we're dealing with today, but it's finding the humor in that. We're, we're, that's what's missing. Mm -hmm. And I would like to be on TV in something like that. Okay. All right. So you've been a voiceover actor. You've been sitcoms. You've been in films. You've been a singer. You've been everything. What do you want to accomplish with the rest of your career? Wow, these are really good questions. That's how we do on here. I see. Um, if I could get people to, when they think about my career and they think about what I do, if I could get them to think about being more whole as a community, being more responsible to each other, being able to show more compassion and more love to everybody. If I could do that with my art, then I feel that I would have a good career. Because um, I think that's what art is supposed to, it's supposed to uplift people. It's supposed to um, change the dynamic of communities, change the dynamic of the world. And so if my art can somehow help that, then I think I would have a, gr a good career. It's a good answer. It is. <laughs> Thank you. It's a good, a good answer. So, so what is next up for for T. C. Carson? Man, I want to eventually. There are two things I want to do. I want to eventually have a one man show on Broadway. Okay. And I want to have a home show. Um, a home design show. When you look at HGTV and all those things, um, they don't have many people that look like us in design capacities. Very true. They have us in um, carpenter and plumber um, capacities. And there are a lot of African-American designers out. And when I look at our channels, there are no, there's nothing like that on our channels. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that I can um, be one of those people to usher that in because you can do that and get older and people will be okay with that. When you're on camera, when you're on stage, as you get older, people tend to kind of go, eh. Especially, <laughs> especially out here in Hollywood, come right. on, you know, they go, eh. How old is he? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, doing something like design, you can be an older gentleman and it would right. still work, you know. And yeah. I, think, I think we need to see that. I think, again, we don't see enough of the breadth of who we are as people. We only right. see little pieces of who we are on TV. And we, I want to see the breadth of who we are. We're funny, yeah, but we got all this other stuff, too. Right. 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 Well, there you go. I want to see more of the breath of who we are on. I on, do on too. TV. Yeah. So Terrence, TC Carson, yes. where can people find you online? Where can they find your, your stuff? This, this new CD, we know you can get it on, on iTunes, but mm -hmm. where else can people find it? Well, you can find me on Twitter at TC Carson. You can find me on Facebook at TC Carson, you can hit me up on my website at T C Carson. So call me up when you need me, baby. I'll be right there for you, you, you. <laughs> 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 I feel like you sang to me, though. I did, did baby. <laughs> it was just for you. I did that I just it. for you. I love it. Now, where can they find you? Um, wh what else do you have going on before we leave that you'd like to plug? Um, 
hit me up on my YouTube channel at TC Carson on YouTube channel. I'm trying to get my viewership up. Please buy the al well, camera. Please buy the album. Buy the album. As independent artists, we need you. We need you to go out and support us so we can keep doing the music that we love to do. And you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Spotify and iTunes. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Love y'all. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you for coming you. in. Thank you. It was, oh, it was great. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Where can people find you, Megan? As always, get on that good Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Meg Scoop, like scoop of ice cream. Butter pecans, my favorite. <laughs> you can find me all over the internet at the Nick Purdue. Again, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. From producers Maria Menunos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Hollywood. Redefined. Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in-depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.